All right, greetings and welcome back everyone. In this video, we're going to take a look at our very, the first of the series of scripting languages in Unity. And uh, this one, we're going to be taking a look at Bolt. And uh, if you like this video, please go below. Please subscribe. Please click the little notification icon so you can get notified of new videos. And uh, leave comments too as to what scripting languages you like using or if you'd like to me to cover another scripting language in this series that maybe I'm not planning on. So Bolt is powerful. Bolt uh, uses what's called reflection to basically look at the C-sharp assemblies and any new assemblies even that you would want to add into your projects and can create nodes for you right out of those assemblies. So Bolt really mimics a lot the C sharp language. And if you're wanting to write in C sharp and your goal is to be a good C sharp programmer, then Bolt is a natural kind of fit for you as a visual scripting language. It uh, allows you a lot of flexibility. Another advantage of Bolt is it's free because Unity bought it and they're incorporating it into Unity, at least in some form. It's going to have some official support. So that's another positive for Bolt. And uh, I have courses on Bold. If you're interested, please you know go below, look at my links. I have a lot of free uh, lectures in those courses where I use Bolt to build a pirate trading game uh, that gets pretty complex in terms of using Bolt with state machines and things, and also Bolt for uh, like a life simulator game as well as an idle game as well. So I you, in the first game I made in Bolt, in course I made, I was literally able to build it in like three or four hours of having Bolt. Uh, because it, it so mirrors the C-sharp uh, ecosystem. So, so it was, it's really easy for people with C-sharp to use. I, I would also say it's great for the lateral thinking uh, that I think is really necessary as game developers and enterprise developers. And, and, and if you're a game developer, you're also you know, composing music possibly too and making graphics. And you just have a lot of different things you're doing. And by using a visual scripting language some of the time, at least a little bit now and then, it just kind of gives you a different way of looking at game design and gets you away from writing so much code. And so um, while I still build you know, a majority of my projects in C Sharp, there are times where I like to just kick back and some things just work really well uh, with visual natures and some people are visual oriented so if you're a visually oriented person maybe sometimes building something out that's complicated in in bolt might be easier so with that little introduction let's just jump in and see how you can build a simple little flappy bird type mechanism in bolt so right now we have our bird and our bird is flapping it has the standard stuff on it uh, a sprite render so we can see the bird an animator so the bird will flap around uh, and see that and we have the rigid body uh, with the gravity and so forth there's a box glider I've turned it off for our testing now I have all these components for all these visual um, scripts that I've already made uh, so I could test them all out and know how they all work uh, but now we're gonna add one on uh, for bolt uh, from scratch and now if I run our flappy bird we're gonna see that BB our African gray parrot we uh, uh, have a parrot named uh, BB and so you can see without any components active the the bird just falls and so let's make a fly bird component using bolt and um, I come down here to add component now I'm gonna assume you can get bolt installed there's plenty of videos in that bolt offers that this is kinda of to give you an idea of how just to jump in and how it works so bolt here has a flow machine available right in the add component when I do this it attaches this component right onto our object and since this is the bird this is where we need to be doing the flapping now I can do this as a macro which means I would build my graph as an asset out here um, and then drag it in to to basically attach this game object or I can come here and choose embed and actually just build the machine the our, our um, visual scripting right into the game object and I'm gonna take this approach just because it's clean and simple for something like flappy birds if you're making something this simple uh, now obviously if you're gonna have multiple birds that you might have different controllers on that would already kinda of break this model anyway so this will work fine and so we'll say fly little bird doesn't really matter what you name this and I'll say this is bolt 
and we can say makes the bird flap and now we can just hit edit graph and you'll notice that Bolt gives us these two events just like a C sharp script does and Bolt really does mirror C sharp a lot in that we can start out by just saying hey we need to see if we have a key down event so I'm gonna come and just drag out here and it's gonna prompt and I can say input dot and it's gonna look and start pulling uh, and it has a nice little search feature here so if I type key notice if I just type key it put input dot get key at the very top that's the one I need and I, I like that about bold is it's not just like a key sensitive thing like it finds things like a keyword search it also seems to weight them to which ones you're gonna make use most likely and so this is the one we want to use and we can then come right here to our pop-up and choose space and just like that we've basically done the same thing as what you would in C sharp to check for a spacebar getting hit and that this update event gets called every frame and it's going to get called every you know 60 times a second or 30 times a second or 120 times a second whatever it happens to be on the platform you're on and it's going to check here to see if the spacebar's hit and if that becomes true it's going to come out here now we don't want to always fire off the, uh, the 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 flying mechanism. We only want it when this key is pressed. So now notice how it, it put branch at the very top. And if I choose branch, this boolean that comes into true here comes in. And so if you're not pressing this key, you, this is going to be basically sending a false. And then as soon as you are pressing this key, it's going to do to, uh, true and so now if it's true what do we want to do well we want to get the rigid body off of our bird and we want to do an up and what's kind of neat if I just type in velocity here um, we're gonna see some options but the one that's really nice here is we see we have this um, rigid body to, to dot velocity set and when I choose this this is exactly what we need for this um, and notice this turns gray and it's turning gray because we don't have a path through here so there's no way this will run and this is getting over and so this is kind of prompting us to grab and you know click and hold and drag this to here so that the path works true if we're not pushing the key down we just don't want to do anything just like we would do in uh, in any scripting language but if we do hit that button now we want on our Y so X is first and then Y is here so let's go and just add a one velocity to our rigid body and because Y is up this should if this works like it's supposed to our bird will flap and go up and so we run and after a little bit hit space and notice every time I hit space bar this fires and it goes here so we can actually visually see it here it is showing us that it's checking all the time and it's false and notice how it flips to true right there and if I hold it down it lets me just keep flying so because I'm just looking for it being down so it's false I'm holding the space bar down it's true remember I have the box colliders turned off just so we can test it um, and um, that's how it works Thanks again, and I will see you guys in the next video.